Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unbox coming at you today with a quick look at some Android apps running on the Asus Chromebook Flip. For those of you unaware, the Flip is one of a few devices that has Chrome OS 53 already running and it's actually been updated a couple of times. So these apps are starting to really smooth out and work really well and so we wanted to showcase some of the more graphically intensive ones and some of the day-to-day -day ones that you might be interested in and show you how smooth and how well they actually work on hardware as simple as the Asus Chromebook Flip. The Flip actually has last year's rock chip processor, usually scores an octane score around 7,000 in the low 7,000s, and as we all know, that's not really that great. And it gets around okay for most things, but you would think that Android apps on it would be a bit slow. It's actually completely the opposite, and I'm going to show you here in just a second how well these apps actually run. All right, so first up, we have Instagram. Works as you'd expect it to. Granted, it's small uh, over on the side, but we don't really see Instagram on any other kind of form factors. But works exactly as you expect it to. And we can double tap for likes. Click into comment. Keyboard works just fine. All that good stuff. Next, we'll open up Flipboard. Get some of these you would use in a tablet format. You know, fold the thing back and read. Um, we'll just go to cover stories. So again, Flipboard works exactly as you'd expect it to. Nice and smooth, no issues here. So let's see. There's no share options here. What about? So I can flip this into a magazine just like you would in the app. I mean, yeah, everything works exactly as you'd expect it to, which is kind of the point, isn't it? Next we have Microsoft Word. Now for a lot of us, we've made the migration over to Google Docs and have no need for Word, but there are a lot of people who do have need for Word. Um, some new stuff here. I don't use Microsoft Word, so I have no doc files really to work with, but I'm gonna open up a template that actually has some, uh, a lot of formatting in it and show you. Um, no issue, so I'm gonna click in here and. Um, oh no, let's see. Templates are a little different. But, oops, I can't type. Works just as you'd expect. So let's check out Adobe Lightroom. And we see it resize there. We'll go full screen with this one. Alright, so. Cool. So there's a learning curve with all these. Let's try a mouse. Works just fine there too. Pretty cool. Do some rotation. So that'll be a fun app uh, to do some basic cropping, that kind of stuff. Again, I haven't used this app, so um, just trying to show that things are working smoothly. So here's Monument Valley, which is a really awesome game if you've never played it. It utilizes some really cool 3D elements. And again, as you'd expect, sound works just fine. Volume's all the way up, so that's... Go to the second level here. It's a very zen kind of game. It allows you to... It's kind of an MC Escher type thing, so things that look like they're in one setting in 3D and aren't necessarily in that setting and you tap to move her around. But as you can see, everything's smooth. No frame rate drops or anything, which is awesome. So let's load up Alto's Adventure. So we're all loaded up here. We'll tap it to start. And this is similar to Ski Safari, if you've never played it, but it has the graphics of the game we just looked at, which is uh, Monument Valley. But as you can see, guys, this is running perfectly smooth. There's no lag when I touch stuff. Um, there's no lag in the, in the animation. And I know we're not dealing with anything crazy here. Oh, boy. Oh, I missed. So, as you can see, 
works very well. Let's do Netflix real quick. So a lot of people have asked about Netflix as well. Now granted, you can go to the website and watch Netflix, but hey, since we have the app now, um, I can't show much of anything on here, so I don't want to get in trouble. Um, this looks like a really old Batman cartoon, so let's click it. It might not be, no, it's 2007, not old at all, but hopefully I won't get in trouble here. And you can see it loaded right up. We're still waiting for the Netflix takes a minute to buffer usually to get to full. And we're getting there. Where, Mr. Thorne? But I mean, all this works. And additionally, casting works from all of these apps as well. And the last one I want to show you is easily the most graphic intensive. Um, it's Shadowgun Dead Zone. And the reason I want to show this to you is because I've got it cranked up on full settings. So it's running um, at the... Uh, the full uh, full graphic capacity that it can um, and it runs really really well and get through all this stuff let's just do okay. get into a game real quick you can see moving around the menus and stuff works perfectly fine um, no hiccups or anything like that and again to me if a game of of this quality with this amount of graphics with 10 12 players in a room so I mean we're playing real time with people all that kind of stuff if all that works so we can see even like the little sand stuff running across lightning effects and particles in the air so we have everything running here oh, running here that wasn't very fair hoping I can get in dropped in where which you can see right here as we're flying through smooth I mean no frame rate drops everything is just buttery smooth and it's actually pretty fun to play on a screen this size. Now, right now, they don't have uh, the controller. Won't It won't recognize the keyboard as your controller, uh, which is kind of a bummer because it would be awesome to be able to play with a trackpad and keyboard. Because it's a little difficult sometimes with the on-screen buttons, especially looking through a camera. But as you can see, I'm not really worried about how well I'm playing. I wanted to show you in a multiplayer environment where we have multiple people on the server, we have all kinds of things going on, beautiful 3D graphics, smooth as can be. And remember, this is on the Rock Chip device, uh, last year's Rock Chip device, which scores an octane of around 7,000. So uh, its ability to render graphics and run Android apps, uh, no problem whatsoever. And the reason that's so encouraging uh, in general is that um, we know that a lot of these two-in-one apps uh, our two-in-one Chromebooks aren't going to have, you know, Core i7s in them or anything like that. And the beautiful part is you don't need it. Um, as I've clearly showed in this video, anything that you want to run um, is going to run just fine when Android apps hit. So don't fear, oh, I've got to make sure and get XYZ processor. Because right now, this the processor in this device is one of the slowest uh, that you can get. And it is running Android apps without any issue whatsoever. One quick note with this Mega N64, I did pair a MOGA uh, controller in HID mode. It was able to uh, use it, and I was able to play like Mario Brothers or something uh, with it just fine. So it's getting there. Um, I think uh, as, as full support comes for controllers and stuff like that, gaming is going to be pretty cool on here. That's about it for this one, guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Uh, keep an eye out on the channel. We've got lots more stuff coming, uh, lots more reviews coming, lots more quick videos like this and how-tos and how to navigate this brand new world that is Android apps and Chromebooks together. Guys, until the next one, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.